Hey, what's up, everybody out there? Welcome to the Tony Gomez Show. Hope you're having a great Saturday afternoon. And today I have the pleasure of inter interviewing the one and only Monty Montana, radio DJ and program director for here in the Coastal Band since 1995. Monty, how's it going today? Good, Tony. How you doing, man? Man, I'm, I'm off to a pretty good start. Had a had a nice little breakfast and uh, got my, uh, my, my gear together for our show. And looking forward to... Uh, uh, entertaining show tonight over at the House of Rock with an interview that I did last week with a guy named Miggy Sanchez from a band called Relent. So, oh yeah, it, it should be a really cool day, man. But this is my highlight right here. I've been looking forward to to uh, hooking up with you and, and asking you a few questions about you know your history and and just kind of let my listeners get to get to know you a little bit better. How does that sound? That sounds great, man. I really appreciate the opportunity and and I think it's fantastic what you're doing with your show, man. It's uh very cool looking production and uh you know you've had some some great guests on so i'm honored to be a uh, part of that list of people man so thanks for having me man thank you so much monty i appreciate it you know i put i put a lot of work into into getting all this done and, and behind the scenes i got my man daniel adama from daniel adama productions engineering supporting it and uh doing everything that i need to make this show rock and roll so you know, money, you know, first time I heard you must have been back at K-Rad, back in the 90s. And then you started rocking mm -hmm. the airwaves on C-101. And through these years, you know, on C-101 and the Coastal Bend, uh, you know, we heard you, your voice while we were growing up, while we were working, while we were partying, and while we are just kind of getting around here in, in, in Corpus Christi. And now we love to hear your, your, your show and hear the different stories that you share whenever you're on the Ego 104.5. And... Uh, it's 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 super cool to you know i was just hearing you last yesterday afternoon and uh your voice is just, it, it rocks man you got such a great voice for the radio and could i ask you um you know who or what inspired you to uh to you know want to get into uh you know get on the mic for you know into the rock business world man um well thank you for the kind words i appreciate that um when i was when I was growing up, I was one of those kids that um, I had a, one of those cassette recorders and I would write um, I would write plays, basically like audio dramas for me and my little uh, neighborhood buddies. And everybody yeah. would have a role and we would get, you know, um, we'd get like a, a tin lid or like a tin can. And, um, you know, if it was a, a scene where in the audio it's supposed to be raining, you'd be tapping on the on the tin can to make it sound like it's raining. Come on guys, let's go. You know, you get the tapping sound and everything. And yeah. all right, see you later. Like, so that kind of stuff always really interested me. The, uh, mostly like, uh, creating stories with, with sound effects. I always really liked that. Yeah. Um, there was a guy in high school. I, I grew up in Maryland and, oh. um, there was a guy on DC one Oh one, which was the radio station that, launched Howard Stern to New York City. So right before Howard Stern went on DC 101, there was a guy that called himself the Grease Man. And wow. he was a goofy character. Like he he had he would create he would create stories and he had characters and he had his own lingo. And me and my high school friends, and a lot of it was like, you know, crude and um, you know, sexual <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah. me and my high school friends would loved to use the lingo that he would come up with. And I always just thought that, that it was super cool, that, that kind of uh, story creation. So um, I was going to, uh, to Del Mar and I was trying all kinds of stuff. I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. And I took a couple of classes, radio production and speaking for radio and television. And, uh, even after taking those classes, it still hadn't, it still didn't click that like, that's really a job that people can do. And I can be one of those people. Uh, but I was having a conversation with my brother and I wasn't really happy with where I was employed at the time. Yeah. I was like, well, why don't you get into radio? I'm like, yeah, why don't I, you know? And so in Del Mar, we made a demo tape um, for, a, for a project. And so I was like, well, I already have, they call it an air check. Um, so I already have an air check, a demo of what I sound, would sound like if I were to be on the air. 
And so I started taking it to the radio stations around town and uh, I didn't hear anything for like, like eight months. Um, wow. And I checked back in every now and then. And uh, one of the stations, it was uh, like a Friday afternoon and I walked in, I was like, I'll just walk in and just check and see. And they just so happened to be firing the part-time guy for that weekend when I walked <laughs> in to ask if they had any openings. And they're like, yes, we do. Come on back. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. And so that's kind of how I got my start. Wow, man. I like that story. Hey, and it, you got to be hungry, man. You got to go and be in person sometimes to make these things happen. You know what? Yeah, it seems yeah. Kind, of, kind of coincidental, but it, it also some can see it as fate, you know, the right place at the right time. And yeah, wow, the, that's what got you in yeah, the door. Was, and was that over? It was a cool, no. So so that was it was a classic rock station. Um, at the okay. time, it was uh, the wave KWVS 97.5. I remember and, Okay. Yeah, it was an it was an eclectic station though. Like it, it they were a little all over the place, but it was basically right. classic rock based. Yeah. Um, and about three weeks after I started, they flipped it to country. All right. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's not really my thing, but I want to do radio. Like, and I just got my foot in the door, so you know, let me stay, and I'll learn the format. And so I started doing country. And there was a, a country station called KOUL, yep. um, 103.7. Okay. And uh, it, was, uh, it was in the same building as KRAD, same company, same building. Great. And I really wanted to work in rock or, you know, KRAD or C101. And so when a job opened up at KOUL, I was like, well, I'm already in the country format. And so maybe I can slide over to KOUL. And once I'm in the building, I can get to know the KRAD guys and move over there. Sure. And uh, it took two and a half years <laughs> to make the transition. But okay. I went from uh, working at KOUL um, and going to KRAD about 90, that's probably 98. Okay. 1998. Yeah. You know what and, I like uh, about first came out it was kind of like a little out, outlaw station where they were playing stuff that you would have never hear on c101 like like bands like slayer and and just uh you know tracks from metallica that that weren't singles and you know that's that that was always cool for us as listeners to you know have that that other station locally that was that was that was daring and taking those kind of chances so uh, that yeah. was i really my k ran that was very very cool about that and when when that station first came on and what they were doing um it it changed what c101 did they had to react to that definitely yeah um, and it was kind of cool it was a little fun to be you know a thorn in their side at that time it was, <laughs> it was yeah. kind of like you know a little bit like sticking it to the man and just like yes. they had at the time they were kind of taking themselves a little seriously a little too seriously back then maybe and mm -hmm. um K-Rad came, al came along and started uh, clowning on everything, you know? And yeah. um, it, it definitely changed that station. And uh, I think in a good way. Right. At first it was a reaction, and then it, would, it was a change that came pretty natural. Yeah. I get it. I definitely, you know, and, and, and there's, you got to stir it up sometimes, you know, when, when, there's, when there's a monopoly right there when it comes to rock radio, which C-101 definitely had, you know, you, you got to bring a competitor in there to, to stir things up. And the same thing happened when 92.7, you know, it came up. Um, yep. to stir up the pot. And there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk between the stations. But they were the ones that were kind of instigating and all that. And uh, that's just the way it goes. You know, it's business. It's business. But they kept it fun. And, you know, it, it wasn't anything seriously ugly. But there was definitely a, a very strong sense of competition on who was the best yeah. rock radio station. And, uh, you know, that's, that's yeah. cool. That's, as, as listeners, we want to hear that, that stuff because, hey, we want the best rock no matter where you're going to bring it on whatever station. And whoever, whoever brings it the most at the best times is going to get us tuning in. So it, 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 it matters. It matters. And, you know, and you know competition that. makes you better. 
Absolutely, absolutely. It's it, it, same thing works, you know, in, in music in, in, as a local band around here. You know, you're, there's always a sense of uh, uh, needing to go up there and kick ass whenever you're playing with your local friends at, at, at our shows and stuff like that. And it just gives you that extra side on, hey, man, we got to bring it. This is our crowd, but there's a lot of local bands here. We, we need to represent for ourselves and, you know, and, and kick ass. And, and it's the same way when it comes to, uh, you know, rock radio. You got to come out there and represent and give people a reason to get excited, stir the pot yeah. up and create it, create some noise, you know, uh, um, make some moves, make some cool moves. And well, that's about that. What what made you made the move from like a K Rad to C101? How did how'd you get into C101? Well, K Rad was on until 2000. Um, they took it off the air and uh, everybody came in like it was a normal day. One after the other, they started calling people into the general manager's office and firing people. Yeah. And so I'm on the air. Uh, I was oh. I was midday. And so I'm doing my air shift and I'm hearing the tiptonizer get called back. I'm hearing Crazy Corey get called back. You know, yeah. um, I'm hearing all these, you know, my, my co-workers going to the general manager's office and then, you know, word gets out really quick. What's going on? Yeah. So I'm still on the air doing my air shift. Like, do I, uh -oh. should I, should I keep doing this? What are we doing here? You know? And, right. uh, yeah, that was, that was a little, uh, I, I just, I just kept going with it. And once yeah. I got off there at three, took me into the general manager's office, told me that he had let everybody go. Mm -hmm. And that they were going to uh, flip the format. I can't even remember what they changed it to at that point now. But um, they were going to let me stay and work at 96.5 at the beach. Because that was another state. There were three stations in the building. And the beach okay. 96.5 was the other station. And, and so I'm like, you know, as long as I get to stay employed uh, for now... Yeah, that's awesome, you know. And so I worked there for about six months before uh, the night guy at C101, a guy named uh, Dallas, was uh, was going to leave. And um, once I heard that, I, you know, I, I gave him my my resume and my tape. And um, I knew one of the guys pretty well who worked in the building already, uh, Big Frank. Uh, okay. at K99. Yeah. He had been working. We worked at that country station together for a while. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he put in a good word for me over there. And with my, my tape and resume, I sat down with, uh, with Paula K and, uh, we hit it off real well and I got a job offer. Wow. So, yeah. I dig it. And what year was that? Uh, 2001, 2000, 2001. Yep. Yeah. Wow, man. And so how long you been here at the Eagle? So uh, three? 2020, I, I got laid off uh, from C101 in uh, 2020. And uh, in uh, January or February. Were you and, program? Yeah, I was the program director. Yeah, I thought and, so. Okay. Uh, I had been doing that for probably probably eight years as the as the program director um, yeah, killer. and then in October 2020 I started with the uh, with the Eagle and um, it's it's pretty cool man it's a you know it's a smaller company it's uh they have like three stations in Corpus and two, I think two stations in like Lubbock Wow. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. I so, enjoy the, uh, with the Eagle, man. You, you guys play some great music. You know, I'm, I'm hitting 52 this, well, I'm hitting 53 this year. And I, I still surf around all the stations. But, you know, when I chill in the backyard, my station is always 104.5. I just leave it on there. And I don't need to change it because that, that's the kind of jam I want to hear when I'm barbecuing, when I have company over. And uh, I know all the songs. I know them all by yeah. heart. Whether it's the Eagles, whether it's Black Sabbath, whether it's, you know, the Metallica, 
You know, and it's funny now because I never would have thought back when I was listening to the Black Album, you know, back in early 1990, that then I would ever hear that on classic rock. And here it is, you know, nothing else matters. Enter Sandman coming on regularly on, on you know, throughout the yeah. day. And, you know, it's funny how the years go by and we don't even realize how, how quick life passes through our fingers. And, you know, uh, I know you got a family. I think you got a couple of boys that are, I think, are in, maybe in their teens and a daughter in a teen. Is that right? Yeah. They grew yeah, up so uh, boys are, the boys are 12 and they're really, they're into rock, um, <laughs> which you cool. know, shouldn't be much of a surprise, I guess, but uh, no. <laughs> they're, uh, they're twins. One plays guitar, one plays drums. Um, they create their own music together. One of them's writing lyrics and they're, they have fun with it. Right now it's, it's just kind of for fun. Although one kind of feels like you might want to do do a bit more with it Great. and um i i haven't discouraged any of it yet um i say yet because <laughs> i've worked closely with the music industry and i've seen some of the bad side oh. of it yes um, i get it. so that's something that not just anybody can navigate right um, that's right you can be a great musician, but that may not be a good field for you to be in. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I do, man. From a dad's perspective, and 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 for me, living that life as well. You know, being um, a musician for over thirty yeah. years, I know, I know, and I've I've got a lot of friends that that haven't made those great choices throughout the years, and you know, and, and it's taken them down a, a southbound path and. And I'm glad that I've been able to keep my head above water and, and make some good choices and and surround myself with good people. Yeah. But uh, no, it's 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 tough to navigate through that, and 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 having you know kids that are are getting hungry for that 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 uh that rock feeling that you get when you're playing in a band it, it is contagious. But uh, I definitely understand your your concern about you know uh, being careful with uh, where you keep going with it and um, keeping a good head on your shoulder. And, and, yeah. and keeping it keeping it right, keeping it right along the way. Uh, yeah. Music has saved my life, and I know that I speak for many people out there. It's 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 saved their life, and it's it's a life changing kind of thing to be able to compose your own music and share it to the public and and have them enjoy it and feel that kind of a that rewarding gratitude experience. And uh, it's a very special thing that that really artists are only able to to enjoy. And uh, I know you can, you know, I, I feel that it's just a great thing that the kids are getting into music. They're going to have some fun with it. And uh, that's that's also exciting. How about your daughter? What is she into? So she's uh, she's going to Del Mar and she's uh, she's going to be 20 this year. OK, um, so, yeah, she's, uh, you know, working part time, going to school part time. I'm not sure if it's part time or full time, but I know she's. Between work and school and social life, she's definitely keeping busy. But she's uh, she's going into nursing, so really oh, happy for her on that. Yeah, they're very demanding right there. But we never we we never get can get enough nurses. I'm telling you, we we, we always yeah. need good people to take care of us. That's awesome. Even when she even when she was little, um, she was into. We would get her like anatomy books. Like there's like yeah. little kid versions of anatomy books, like six year olds for six year olds and stuff. And yeah. uh, we would get her those and she always loved them. So it was something that, you know, very early on she she showed an interest in. So I'm really glad to see her pursuing it, um, you know, as, as a true passion. Sometimes people will go into a field thinking, well, people tell me I should go do this because there's jobs and you make money and whatnot. But if you're not really into it, it's just not going to be very fulfilling. So I think she's I think she's going to enjoy it and do good. That's right. Yeah, I, I know your point right there. You know, it's it, you can't always make it all about money. You know, there's got to be some sort right. of passion that you for it to really be able to perform to your greatest. And and I've always yeah. liked that saying: you get a job that you enjoy, it never feels like you're working. And um, yeah, I, I my my personal day job, I'm in food service, and I work over at the university. And I personally love my job. I love you know being around the people I work with. And man, food service it it, it can chew you up and spit you out. And I've, I've done pretty, pretty well about navigating my way through it and, and finding a nice medium where I can work Monday through Friday at, at the university and still be able to do like my podcast, my, my rehearsals and stuff at night. So I'm, I'm very yeah. blessed to be able to 
make some decent choices and, and, and have a fantastic wife of, of over 30 years to support me through all this. So, That's very cool, man. Hell yeah. It's, it's a, a hell of a ride and I'm not easy to live with, but she is, is a saint to me. That's awesome, man. Well, congratulations. 30 years. It's definitely a, a good run and it's, uh, it takes two strong people to, to keep a relationship going like that for so long. So good for you guys, man. Thanks a lot. And you know, as far as kids, I've got a 28 year old daughter and uh, she's doing great. And, and my son's about to turn 22. And um, I, I got a grandson. He's about to, he's just like three and a half years old and he keeps me running around. Life is a good spot right now. Life is at a good place right now. And, and, and you know what? It sounds like you're in a good spot too. You got a good home there at the Eagle. You got the kids, you know, into their, you know, keep them busy. Your daughter's, you know, making moves on her own. Um, yeah. Let me let me ask you this. Coming back to, to rock, what was your first concert? My first concert was in 1990. I went to a, a club show to see yeah. uh, Social Distortion with uh, oh. Screaming Trees opening for them. Oh. And... Uh, yeah. Screaming Trees, I hadn't seen anything like those guys. They were kind of, uh, they were all, they had like really long hair. Um, <laughs> the out of Yeah, they were, yeah, I mean, they, they looked that part in 1990 for sure. Long hair, flannel, they were kind of heavy set guys, um, yeah. which you didn't see very much, you know? And uh, I just, I was just like, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now, but it's, it's kind of neat, kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then Social Distortion, um, I'd only heard like maybe two of their songs um, before I saw them. And then once I saw them, I'm like, yeah, this this is it. This this is I'm all in on this. And yeah. uh, to this day, still my all time favorite band. Oh, killer. OK, yeah. uh, that may be the Ball and Chain tour possibly back then. Yep. 1990 Ball and Chain tour. That's right. Awesome. Very cool. What about um, you? What's your uh, what was your first one? Yes, yes. You know, I remember seeing, you know, I grew up in the, in the, in the punk uh, scene around here in the 80s. And, you know, one of the videos that would transfer around was a, a video called Another State of Mind. And that was based off of Mike Ness getting the band up and up and on its feet, going out on tour and when, when they had the release, I mean, Little Monster. And it was just, it, you know, it was inspiring as a young musician myself, seeing somebody out there grinding and, and seeing how tough it is being on the road uh playing punk rock and you know not getting any love and not making any money but just grinding it out and doing it out of out of sure love for the music and and wanting to express yourself and mike ness is one of the greats definitely that's a hell of a first I have concert. That, uh, thanks man i have that on dvd as a matter of fact and uh i'm gonna watch it with my sons probably here in the next next few weeks nice that's gonna be that's gonna be some great uh rock history right there you can share with them Awesome. Yeah, for Is, real. Any musical instruments that you play? No, I uh, I got an acoustic guitar when 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 Guitar Hero was really big, and yeah, I saw how much yeah. time people were putting into it. I thought that's that's cool and it's fun. I'm like, well, what if you tried it with a real guitar instead? And so <laughs> I thought maybe I'll try a real guitar, and uh, I didn't I didn't get very far with it. So uh, I hung on to it and I've, I've given it to my son who plays guitar now. So it's definitely getting the love it, it never got from me. He's, he's, uh, he's putting into it big time. So it's yeah, I, uh, that's great. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of musicianship in, in, uh, in my family. Um, yeah. This is going to sound kind of funny, but if you, you got to go, way back to the 1700s but Ooh, okay. there's a connection yeah there's a connection to the uh to the cash family in my family tree so yeah you go way back and somehow johnny cash and his family are very distant relatives to my family it's a um connection it's from uh, our ancestors in scotland wow pretty well very cool hey, rock history right there well country history and cash i gotta say a rocker too you know he's 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 music uh through and through and you know thinking about cash it reminds me of a of a saying that uh 
Trent Reznor just put out not too long ago, it came across where he was saying that, you know, that song isn't even mine anymore. And so I had to research it. And he was talking about his hit called Hurt from a downward spiral. And, you know, and, yeah. I, and I, I dug into, uh, I've always already heard Johnny Cash's version so long ago, but I never realized how his version only had like 80 million hits on Spotify. And then I went to Johnny Cash's site and he had 526 million wow. listens on what so absolutely you know that's more johnny song now and the way he sings it there's that's so much clarity oh man it's like you can feel the yeah. uh the 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 ups and downs and, and the the being on the road that johnny cash has gone through and in, in, in the the grittiness of his voice and uh yeah the jam hurt is something else Jeez. yeah that's a good one well he let did me that ask you. um your favorite band let me know four of your other favorite bands besides social distortion who else are you digging not just now but i mean like in general you collect maybe their vinyls or um yeah who else is you, do you really dig um so when grunge hit um i was i was all in on on that yeah. um i really liked pearl jam and, uh, and and I still do. I still do. I don't listen to it nearly as much, but they were a, a something I listened to a whole lot for a for quite a while. Incredible um, band. I still go back to Led Zeppelin um, <laughs> regularly. Uh, absolutely yeah. love Led Zeppelin. Uh, my older brother got me into them. I got a brother who's six years older, and so when I was growing up, you know, my folks they they had. Like Credence, um, okay. And my dad was into uh, a surf, uh, surf rock band called The Ventures. Heard of um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So they were mostly instrumental, but he he absolutely loved The Ventures. So I would listen to surf rock like The Ventures, and I would listen to Credence Clearwater Revival, and then my brother would have Led Zeppelin and The Stones and The Doors and Black Sabbath, uh, Iron Maiden, you know, Judas Priest, yeah. that kind of stuff. So he yeah. introduced me to a, a lot of that rock stuff. Yeah. But um, my boys, you know, it's funny. So he kind of, he and, and I as well got my boys into Led Zeppelin. I think more so him than me, which is cool because <laughs> uh, now they have more Led Zeppelin vinyl than I do. My boys do. I'm like, how did that even happen? <laughs> yeah. That's super um, cool. But that's, I guess that's that's three. Um, okay, give me one more. Man, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you um, know, I, I did. Those are life changing bands right there. Love yeah. it. And that's cool about your brother kind of turning you on to that. You know, I and I and same had worked for me. You know, I had an aunt that was uh, in high school that took me to my first Kiss concert in 1979, and when I uh, and we we got on the C101 party bus. And oh it was wow. A, <laughs> It was me, my aunt, and my other aunt, Mary, and we went to go see Kiss on the Dynasty tour, and that was my first experience of of the party life. People were drinking and smoking and getting it on all the way up there on C101 uh, party crazy. bus. The show was incredible. I saw Gene Simmons spin out blood and blow fire, and I was already doing anything and everything I could to to get all the the. Uh, the I was a hardcore Kiss fanatic, and that's why they they took me. It was for a birthday gift. And uh, shoot, the rest is history. I wanted to be Dean Simmons, and uh, for for a good period of my of my my stage life, I was wearing makeup for a good ten years because I was just infatuated with just putting like my war face on, and uh, you know, I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. So being around, it's, uh, it's always somebody uh, a few years older that kind of introduces us, right? Yeah, dude, that's that's a it, the amount of people that that kiss influenced is just, it's profound. It really is. Yes. Um, there's a, there's a local band called the chain links and oh, yeah. um, two of the band, uh, there's two of the band members are uh, father and son, the bass player, Joe Martinez and his son, Landon, Landon plays drums. And okay. uh, I know at one point Landon had told me that one of his favorite bands uh, was kiss. And this is a, a 20 year old, a 20 year old kid, you know, 20 year old young man that, uh, yeah. you know, found his influence in, in kiss because his father had introduced him to it, you know? And, uh, yeah. 
I, th I just think that it's really cool that they get to share being in a band together. Um, you want to try to bring your kids into the things that you're passionate about so that you can share those experiences and to be able to do that with music, man, uh, envy is not a, not a good thing to have, but I would have to say I might be a little bit envious of that. I feel you 110%. I would love to be able to do something with my son and, you know, having him play keys and stuff and, or my daughter do some backup vocals. Oh, maybe who yeah. it, never, never, but I am That's envious right. as well. That is something yeah. that very, um, mm, and so you, and, you know, not everybody can do it. And when you kid, when you can do it with your own band, I, I tell you, I got to see the chain links. I've heard so many good things about them. Um, I think I, 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 I know a couple of them already, but definitely got to stop and check out the, the, the chain links. So yeah. thinking about, you know, you've been you're working in the radio broadcasting, you know, for so long. It reminds me of a show called WKRP in Cincinnati. You remember that one? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was like, a late 70s early 80s show and uh, yeah. it was crazy on that you know and and i was wondering you know throughout the years that you, you spent a lot of time during c101 was uh work life kind of like uh, crazy sometimes well uh yeah in the earlier days uh, i think it was uh there was there was a, a little bit of that would go on i mean we was were it all the clear channel well, when I started there, it was it was it was Clear Channel, um, oh. and then eventually it became uh, iHeart Media, iHeart Radio. Um, but when I started at C One Hundred and One, there was there was twelve people working at that station. Um, okay. Now there's not twelve people working for the entire organization in Corpus Christi. Um, wow. Like, like based Whoa. in Corpus, like people committed specifically to one station. So it went from 12 to uh, 12 for one station to maybe, I don't, I don't know how many's there now, but uh, it's, it's a whole lot less, <laughs> um, but it's, yep. you know, it's, it's due to technology, you know, I mean, just uh, you don't need that. It was so fun to, in the early days, um, orchestrate the show because it, it was live um and i i never played records um i never got to to, to play records uh, by the time that i got into radio in 95 they had pretty much switched over to uh cds right so um but you still had to have it you know queued up and ready to go so you'd have your your stack of music for the hour and once one's done um it, you would you know have to take it out you had two, you know, had two CD players going. So you, and um, so you had the two CD players. Uh, they had it looked like an eight track player. They would call it a cart, and you would have your uh, your commercials on carts. Okay. And so you would have to physically pull your your commercials. So you'd have a stack of music, a stack of commercials, and you were physically putting them in and taking them out and queuing them up and making sure that they were ready to go. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for the phone calls, up until I went to, up until after I was working at C101, we did those on a reel to reel. So um, you would you would record the phone call coming in, and then if you wanted to edit it, you would have to, to cut the tape. So you had a razor blade and a, a grease pencil and and tape there with the reel to reel. So right. you've got, you know, you've got a, a three minute, four minute song. So you got your, your CD playing. And while that's going, you got your headphones on and you're you're working the uh, reel to reel to try and get right to the p part where you want to edit it. So you can take the razor blade and cut the tape where you marked it with the grease pencil and then cut it where you put the other mark, bring them together, tape it, get it wound up and ready to go and have have it right where you want it for when you hit the play button because you're going to talk on the air so you're you're counted down for your song to stop yeah you got to know what you're saying you got to know where you're leading into the the phone call that you have on the reel to reel uh -huh. and you, 
you just got to have everything set up and ready to go. So it was, it was constant. Yeah. And it, it was a real, it was a real art, man. It really was. It was a, it was an orchestration. And um, yeah. when, when you did it and it all came together and it worked exactly like you wanted it to afterwards, just like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, it was great. Right. What a win. Yeah. And now with technology, it's, it's a whole lot easier. I mean, the, the, the digital editing is, is very fast, very smooth, very easy, and it sounds really good. Um, so you can do it quickly and you can do it well, but the the art of it, the timing of it, I think is, is kind of yeah been diminished by that a little bit, I guess. I get it, man. Uh, you know, and it, because it's so simplified like that, and technology is, is, is as advanced as it is in radio broadcasting, it does to end up taking the spot of some positions, if not many. And yeah, yeah that's the downsizing part of it. But, yeah. you, know, you know, also, you know, throughout the history of you being a part of radio broadcasting, you're doing a lot of, you know, um, on location remotes and things like that, where you're actually getting a chance to meet some of these listeners in person. Has there any been... It's been some like crazy moments where listeners finally get to meet you in person. Um, most everybody was really cool, man. Um, it, Great. It, was, uh, it was always nice to to meet people that were excited to, you know, to finally put a, a, a face with the voice. And because um, it, it's yep. funny, you know, some people would up until, well, maybe even to this day, like, man, I always wondered what you looked like. I'm like. Really? Because <laughs> my face has been on the internet for about 20 years now, but you know, like they got other things to, to look up when they're online besides <laughs> my face. Um, but every, now everybody was usually really, really cool. Um, the live broadcasts were a lot of fun though. Um, that's where the, that's where the crazy stuff happened. The, the in-studio stuff um, was, was pretty now, typical. Okay. That was kind of, People oh, okay. would. Uh, right. I mean, well, when when I was at K Rad, they would have um, topless entertainers come in. Hello. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How, how did I forget about that? Yeah, so there was that. There was a place called uh, Sunsets Fantasy. Okay, which, where they uh, would answer questions or be a guest or. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and usually topless. So, okay. so that didn't that that was interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but the on location stuff like there was this one time uh, I did a, a live broadcast at Fun Trackers, and oh, right. um, we had so at at this time mo most of what you hear on the radio, except for the the on location stuff, really isn't live much anymore. Um, okay. We had a live guy in the studio and I had a live mic. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to ride the go-kart while I'm on the air doing my break, you know, so they, they can hear the engine, they can hear the wind, they can hear the other go-karts and like really, you know, get that immersive experience. Like, yeah. you know, try and give them as much of the sound of the experience as possible. And so I'm talking about, you know, yeah, hey, we're out here at Fun Trackers. This is a great time out here. You got to come check out the track. They got lots of cars and everything. And I took a turn because I was paying attention to what I was saying and not really the driving. I didn't let yeah. off the gas at all. Um, and I took a turn and I ended up spinning around going in the opposite direction of <laughs> the people coming my way. And I yeah. head on collisioned with another oh. go-kart right there live on the mic and i dropped the mic on the go-kart and um you know i was just like it it didn't feel good i mean those things you, even if you're going 15 miles an hour a head-on collision is is uh it's a slam. Not feeling good so i picked up the mic and i started talking again you know to wrap it up afterwards i called the guy at the station i was like did you hear that? How did it sound? He's like, Oh my God, are you okay? Like that sounded like a massive wreck. And I'm like, awesome. I'm glad it sounded like a massive wreck, you know? Yeah, all right. And, uh, <laughs> and then I said, please tell me you were recording that. He goes, no, nah, I wasn't recording it. Oh. That'd been so cool to have. I wanted to hear it. That kind of reminds um, me 
of how we got started earlier and how when you were with your friends as a kid getting all these sounds together for your voice recordings right there and you yeah. know you never because you know the realist the, the, the realism of, of having those sound effects in the background is going to draw people yeah. out that's so cool yeah. and it was uh, always it was always fun to to do that kind of stuff and because of that, I got drawn into the production side of it a lot too, creating the the radio commercials and whatnot. Yeah, because um, that was an opportunity to to use sound effects and all that stuff. So, yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, because you you know your your skill in in using your voice is um, is so you know it's such at a high caliber. Um, I bet you you're probably interested in doing more than just what you're doing on the radio, right? You begin, have you looked into doing like voiceovers or, or doing voice for like maybe, you know, something different? Um, yeah, yeah, I've I've dabbled in that um, okay. over time a little bit. Uh, I haven't gone full blown into it and I'm not sure what, what the holdup is. Um, I, do, I do have two jobs though. You'd mentioned that uh, you work in food service. Um, okay. So after I uh, after I got laid off uh, from C101, um, the, it was the COVID shutdown. So I was looking for a job when nobody was hiring, you know, and radio stations were laying people off and advertisers weren't advertising and events weren't happening because people couldn't get together. So there were no concert promotions. There was uh, you know, know. A drop in advertising. So I was just like, I got to do, I got to do something. Um, I didn't really have a, it's always good. To, I, I guess it's always good to have a plan B, but I never had a plan B. It's like, I'm all in on radio. I'm going for it. I'm giving it everything I got. I'm gonna, you know, yeah. take it as far as I can go. And so when that dropped out from under me, I was like, oh, okay. This is where plan B comes in. All right. So I, uh, I went to Del Mar and I got the, uh, the class A CDL and, uh, I started working at a place called Horizon Distributors. It's uh, landscaping and irrigation supplies. And okay. so, uh, yeah, that's that's my Monday through Friday job. I drive a, it's a class B vehicle. It's a 24 foot flatbed straight truck with an attached forklift. Um, oh. But I deliver pallets of mulch and, and pavers and PVC pipe and stuff. And uh, Hell it's yeah. a big change. It's, a, it's right. a big change from, from what I did. And I like that, you know, um, Good. I'm getting, I'm getting dirty. I'm getting sweaty. I'm out <laughs> on the road. The, the C101 studio didn't have a window. So, so for 19 years, I was in a building without a window for, for most of the day. Yeah. So now being outside, uh, I really like it. Hell yeah. I really like it. That's great. And I work with somebody you might know. Really? Um, I work with uh, 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 Carlos Ramos, who uh, played guitar for Refueled. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Refueled back in the day. You know, Refueled is kind of something I kind of sit in with because those guys, Joey Perez and Steve Pedraza, the bass player and guitar player for Refueled, that jam alongside Carlos, um, play with me in my band Fistful of Metal. So, yeah, dude, Carlos is a shred. Yeah. He is a shredder. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's talked about fistful of metal uh, at work before. Yeah, definitely. He he knows when you guys are gonna play and, and talks about going out to the shows and whatnot. So yeah. yeah. Hey, Monty, I appreciate your grind, man. That's the way you gotta hustle as a dad nowadays. When COVID hit, man, um, you know, I it took me out of work definitely out of university, but you know, it was a strange time because you had you we were getting all this money for for staying at home. And you know, I'm, I'm I gotta say I was I wasn't complaining about it, man. I was but I was saving up because I knew this shit wasn't gonna last forever. And it just yeah. didn't right because you shouldn't be paying me to stay home. You know, I just know that. And during that yep. time, that's what me into podcasting because I was staying at home for trying to find things to keep myself busy. And next thing I, I listened to a lot of radio, but I wanted to hear a little bit more. And so that's what got me into listening to a a guy by the name of Jamie Josta who sings for a band called Hate Breed. And he has yeah. a band show called The Josta Show. And man, I just love what he does. And so that next thing you know, my wife's saying, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, I want some podcast gear. I want to do my own thing. 
And so here I am a year later and, and you know, I've, I've got a lot under my belt and it's, it's something that I want to be able to do other than being in a band as my, as my plan B. That's my plan yeah. B. It's, it's fun, yeah. man, is to be, you know, on the air. And this is my way of being on the air. And uh, I can't tell you how much it, it's, it's brought a lot of joy to my life. So, I'm, you know, like I said, I appreciate the grind, man. You know, you, you're doubling up on jobs. You know, I, I hear that you, uh, is, there, is your home already built? I know you're, you're getting a home built or is it almost finished? Yeah, um, I moved, uh, I, I actually moved into uh, to a pre-existing home in, in Flower Bluff. So, uh, okay. um, a, a four bedroom house for me and my kids. And uh, yeah. they're, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, man. The, the house okay. is, I'm not very good interior decorator, that kind of a thing. My, my daughter helps with that a little bit. Cool. Um, but it's definitely become a, a home for us and you know it's just it's great it's great when we're all together you know yes man i'm glad you're, you're permanently making your roots here in corpus so we can keep hearing you on the air every day monday through friday that's awesome man so let me uh, tell me um do you got any advice for for li our listeners that are you know wanting to go into a career in radio broadcasting of uh, being a, maybe a dj or a program director wow um there's a lot of, I guess, have have something going on. Um, oh. That's that that would be the first thing. Like like go in there with something. Have something. Um, for me, it was a demo tape. You know, um, these days. But that was, you know, how do you, how would you have recorded a demo tape back then if it wasn't for for Del Delmar, you know, I mean, the, the technology wasn't available. It just wasn't, it wasn't around. I mean, the internet yeah. in 1995 was, was barely a thing. So you couldn't email an MP3 of what you sounded like, you know? So um, right. these days use that technology to your advantage, you know, um, try to start to create a fan base on uh, social media, you know, like, like what you're doing here. If you can start a, a show uh, here and you can show them uh, that, you know, hey, I know how to talk to people. I know this technology. I'm already, you know, doing this. I have these skills that I can showcase. I mean, even if it's um, making playlists on Spotify or something like that, like if you want to get into radio, you can make uh, playlists on Spotify and uh, really try to push that and promote it. And, and if it's a good playlist, People will listen to it and that'll show up and that'll be a metric that you can go and say, hey, you know, I'm really interested in music. I've got these playlists on Spotify and, and here's how they're working out, you know. So um, yeah. that that would be I like that, that would be my advice. I guess try to try to have something going on because you've got a lot of options these days on how to showcase your abilities in those things. Very good advice. You know, exactly. The technology that's available right now is, you know, 25 years uh, in advanced from when you had the opportunity to, to just bring that, that recording of yourself to the station. You know, you can do so much out of your house uh, using YouTube and using just your phone to, to make recordings and to, uh, yeah. to push it, make something happen. Right. I like that. Yeah. And, and you know, I would say, uh, sorry, I would say the one other thing maybe would be um, to uh, have some humility, you know, like if you don't have a lot going on, um, that's OK. You know, you go in there and go. I really want to do this. I have absolutely no idea what to do. Um, I will do anything that you need me to do whatsoever. What is what is what are the chores that nobody wants to do? Give me those. I'll do that. I'll start there. You know, um, just to get a foot in the door. Yeah, um, that's that's how I started, like over part time overnight. I was the official part time overnight on the weekend guy. I was <laughs> nobody wanted those shifts. I'm like, that's that's my shift. I'll do that. Like and I owned it, you know. Yes. Um, I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Uh, I didn't enjoy those hours, but I enjoyed what I was able to do in those hours. So yeah. that's you know, what it's about. Make it work. 
yeah, getting that experience on your belt and being willing to do the things that other people don't want to do and taking it and owning yeah. it. That's awesome. Yep. Definitely great words right there. So what do you like to do for fun? What kind of hobbies do you have? Um, I got a motorcycle in 2021. Um, and cause I had been thinking about it for a long time when I was a kid, uh, Me I would too. ride dirt bikes, you know? Okay. And, um, after I, after I got the, after I learned to drive 18 wheelers, I'm like, okay, I think it'd be pretty cool to be able to drive an 18 wheeler, uh, and have that on my license and be able to drive a motorcycle and have that on my license too. And yes. so I went and got the, um, uh, went to Coastal Cycle Academy and took the course and and got the got the license and got a motorcycle and and it's been a lot of fun you know um, I got a cruiser um, I'm the guy in the slow lane I'm not trying to go anywhere fast just like to just kind of chill and enjoy the ride oh um, hell so doing that well uh, great man I have a long skateboard I'm sorry. Uh, no. I have a longboard skateboard too. And so I kind of cruise on that with my sons. They have skateboards and we'll ride from time to time. And again, it's just like a slow, mellow cruise. I'm not doing tricks or anything like that. I just kind of like to roll along, you know? Yeah. 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 But it, tell me, I, I, you know, I've kind of been on your, on your, on your Facebook. You like getting out there and doing some hiking as well? Yeah, man. Um, I, I've done a little bit of rock climbing and if we lived somewhere where it was, where it was closer, um, yeah. I would be an avid rock climber. It was so much fun. It's amazing. It's one of those things that, um, it really, it, it requires your focus. And, and that's what I like about the motorcycle riding too, is that, you can't be thinking of anything else or paying attention to anything else. You're not on your phone. You're not worrying about work emails. Um, you're, you're in the moment you're focused on what you're doing because you have to be, it forces yeah. you to, um, to, to be present, you know, to be fully present. And, um, the more of that I can do, the more of those kinds of things that I can find, the better because I need it because there's so many distractions um, with, you know, on, on these things alone. <laughs> your phones yeah. are it's so it can be so distracting and suck you into doom scrolling or, you know, some <laughs> rabbit hole about information that's unimportant. And I know exactly. You know, oh, it, yes. I find myself going down reels. And next thing you know, it's MMA. It's an MMA fighting, you know, just a collection of fight after fight after fight. And it's all good. Yeah. I'll find yeah. wrestling. And just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. What like you three hours about. later, like, what? <laughs> Tell Crazy. me about it. Right. Hours yeah. later. But I like going out hiking, man. I don't know if you've been to a place called per, uh, Pertinellis Falls. It's uh, maybe about 30 minutes or so out of out of Austin West. And, uh, I went out there a couple of weeks ago for the first time with my wife, and we've never made hiking something that we do as a family, but she really wanted to do it. We uh, we missed out on being able to get into Enchanted Rock, and she really wanted to go to that, but it was all booked up. We couldn't find a spot for us to fit in, so we went and went to Pertinellis Falls, and, man, it was great. It was really cool, and I'm looking forward to getting back out there. And um, Is there a spot that you like to go hiking at that, or, or go uh, rock climbing? Man, that's badass. Uh, I, I haven't been to Pertinalis Falls, but I've heard good things, and it's definitely a place I want to go. Um, that's nice. Yeah, you know, and when people think about rock climbing, they'll, they think about, you know, Yosemite, El Capitan, that kind of a thing. Um, sure. You don't have to get up too far before you start to feel like, well, damn, if I, uh, if I <laughs> fall, I can really hurt myself or, or more. You right. know, you get, about, you get about 50 feet up, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I could do some damage from this this height. Yes. Um, I've gone uh, in Austin. There's a place called uh, Greenbelt. Um, I've gone to Reamer's Ranch, I think, near Dripping Springs. Um, uh, Enchanted Rock. There's on the uh, on the base of the rock or and on the backside of it. There's definitely some really cool 
um, climbs there. Wow. And um, they just opened up an area in San Antonio called Medicine Wall um, that, that I want to try out. Um, I still haven't been to uh, Government Canyon. I want to go to Government Canyon. Um, I don't know if there's climbing there, but I've heard it's a good hike at least. Oh, cool. So um, I, I tend to go to Oso Bay Wetlands Preserve uh, to walk around the trails there um, often because that's yeah. a neat place and really extremely close. Um, I need but, to check that out. Uh, other than that, I started uh, last year to, to go to Lake Corpus Christi a little bit more. Okay. Um, take uh, my boys. Know. We load up their bicycles and and ride our bikes around there and, and stuff. So, um, yeah. starting off small, man. Um, before I start to to venture out a little bit further, you know. But yeah. that's definitely a goal is is to start hitting up more hikes and climbs. Uh, just time and money, man. Time and money. I know what you mean exactly. Well, I remember us talking a little while ago, and you mentioned vinyl. Do you collect a lot of vinyl or is there some other things that you're a collector of? Um, I, I have a little bit of vinyl. Um, okay. I, I would like to collect more. I just, uh, I just haven't. Um, I had uh, an opportunity, man, it was in, um, I think 1999. We went out to the old C101 studio and um, that's the one that's like in Sinton in a, in a pasture right okay. next to the broadcast tower okay. and um they still had vinyl out there um yeah. they, they had a room it was just like it wasn't a big room but it was like i don't know five five rows high all along the walls of of records and um they said we're gonna get rid of these so take whatever you want whoa um, kick ass by that time, it was pretty <laughs> well picked over, you know, by 2019, uh, that stuff had been out there since, since the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the good stuff was gone, but I found, I found some, I found some Neil Young. I found uh, yeah. some jazz that was cool. What's her name? Uh, Bessie. I can't remember the name now. Bessie Smith. I think it was or something. I'd have to look it up, but um right. I found some a, a few recognizable names and some oddball stuff, but um, yeah. those were nice additions to uh, to the vinyl collection. Um, yeah. You had mentioned bands to for me to name four bands, and one I probably should have mentioned there is uh, the Black Keys. Hey. I really like the Black Keys a lot, man. Um, and so I have some more stuff on vinyl. Yes, definitely. Good stuff right there. I love the Black Keys, too. They're, they're always changing, man. They're, they're, they keep evolving. And, and you know, I'm always uh, I love they're, they're one of the best bands that, that is still rocking, you know, over the past couple of decades. Love the Black Keys. Yeah. too. So, yeah, definitely. What stuff. Is what are your favorite movies? Man, I've I've been uh, I haven't been watching a lot of movies here lately, so I. I uh, I don't have a lot of new favorites. A lot of my favorite stuff is from the nineties. Um, absolutely yeah. love, uh, you know, dumb and dumber. Uh, it's <laughs> yes. Love Jim carry anytime that's on. That's, that's a good one. Um, the big Lebowski love that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, ah, man, there's, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, I, I really liked, this this might be kind of corny, but the last of the Mohicans. I don't know. That, that's yeah. kind of. Uh, well, they, I think. Yeah, that's that was some good action. You know, there's it's like a love story kind of a thing, but uh, yeah. the good. action is good one. incredible. Very nice. Yeah. Good choices right there. You know, let's Thanks go ahead and move on to the segment that I like to call "Draw the Line, Monty." I want to see. Uh, I want to pick your brain a little bit and give you some subjects and, and stick some things together. Um, and tell me what you prefer. Say, for instance, um, could be bands, could be uh, singers. So let's kind of get things started here. So for the first yeah. for the first question I'm going to have for you today on Draw the Line, I want to ask you a little something about um, 
I also know you like biking. So tell me, what do you prefer? You prefer rock mountain climbing or biking? Which one would you rather do over, you know, say you got this weekend to, to enjoy. You want to make some time with the family. What do you want to rock? Rock climbing? Or you want to go some uh, a nice afternoon? Rock climbing. Hey. Rock climbing all the way. Yeah. It Riding is. a bike is, is nice and, and pretty chill, but, but yeah, the, the satisfaction, um, the, the adrenaline, the, the, the focus of, uh, of rock climbing, you know, like you're, you're overcoming an obstacle, like literally, you know, and you get to the top or you get to the finish and you see what you, you can see what you've accomplished, you know, and you can, yeah, you can be proud of that. Like I did that and I'm didn't break anything. Awesome. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. It's, you got to the top of the mountain, man. That's always, you know, it's a manly thing. You know, it's, it's kind of yeah. like Rocky running up to the top of the stairs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fly yeah. high. I love it. That's I love right. It. So I also know that, that, that you like to fire, fire pistol. What do you prefer? Do you like it? Do you, do you prefer a nine millimeter pistol or maybe a 38 caliber? What do you like to shoot? Um, I have a, a nine millimeter um, that I carry. I've got the uh, Smith and Wesson MMP shield. Um, cool. Definitely like that. Um, I'd have to go with the nine millimeter. Um, yeah. My dad is, uh, is a gun collector. He was a gunsmith for a, for a while. Um, cool. So he's very much into it. And I've, I've shot quite a few, guns uh from you know that he owns but yeah um i'd, I'd have to say the the 1911 um 45 caliber 1911 man you cool. fire one of those things and you're you're just like it, it's uh it's some it's a feeling of power you know i mean you want to respect it but you're just yeah. like wow there there's some power in my hand right now it's pretty incredible it's like Woo! Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, you're not reminds, messing around with that. Reminds me of Dirty Harry. Make my day. Yeah. Hell That's yeah. Right. <laughs> well, okay, next one. 90s rock, like Tool, Deftone, Stain versus 2000s rock, like, say, Hailstorm, Architects, or Five Finger Death Punch. Go with the 90s again, man. Maybe I'm perpetually stuck there. I don't know. Um, there was a, I mean, 2000s had some good music for sure, but I mean, when you're, when you're talking Tool and Deftones, uh, for sure, man, those, those are, those are solid. So I'd, yeah. I'd have to go 90s. Okay, cool. Well, Tool's one of my favorite bands along with Slayer and I love Chino's voice with the Deftones and, and not everybody can get into, into Chino's voice. You know, a lot of my friends are like, yeah, I'm not really a big Deftones fan and, and and it's usually about his voice but i love both of those bands so let me ask you who do you prefer versus well from tool versus deftones for me it'd probably be uh deftones um okay. funny thing is I've, I've had the opportunity to uh to speak to to both singers um cool maynard came to maynard came to corpus with a perfect circle um i remember that concrete street yeah and um to promote that show um i had a, a phone call with them had a phone interview and um interesting dude you know for sure yes. um he was i don't remember a whole lot of the conversation unfortunately right now um the one thing i do remember is he, he thought uh concert ticket giveaways call in to win tickets he thought it was kind of silly um, and I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, what, what would you, uh, what would you suggest we do? What would be a good way to, to go about that? And he thought, um, you know, maybe doing community service to get your hands on tickets would be a good way to, to win. And I'm like, that's not a bad idea at all. I like that. Yeah. And, uh, and so the next time that tool had come around the American bank center. I think it was on that, uh, 10,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was, I was responsible for putting in the, um, this C one-on-one's uh, promotional proposal, like 
what are we going to do to promote that show? And, you know, we're going to promote it this way and you give us tickets to help with that promotion. And so I, I put in there, you know, we'll, we'll do, um, you know, most the biggest amount of community service person gets some tickets and they shot it down. And I'm Damn. like, oh, hold on. That's not my <laughs> idea. Like, that's that's not my idea. That's ask right. Maynard about that one. That's his idea. You're shooting down Maynard's idea for that yes. promotional proposal. And uh, and it, that didn't help any. They didn't care. <laughs> so we didn't. Uh, well, I mean, we could we could. Uh, you, you can't. And once you put in the promotional proposal, you got to yeah. stick to it. You do what you say you're going to do. Um, with those tickets, everyone's accounted for, and uh, they want proof of performance and everything. So um, that's how that went. And um, and Chino, um, I, actually, I got to play ping pong with him. Um, hey, all right. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about. It, it wasn't just me there. It was you know a bunch of people, but we were playing ping pong, hanging out, and talking. And um, somehow we got on the subject of, of Halloween. I don't remember exactly why, but he uh, said it <clears throat> said at that time that when he was in, I think, middle school, he dressed up as Boy George for Halloween one year. Uh -huh. And uh, he got a mixed reaction from the kids <laughs> at school on that yeah. one, as you might imagine. Interesting. But I'm like, that's a... That's an interesting choice. Yeah. But, uh, right. but they were both uh, pretty cool dudes. But I, I'd have to say that um, I felt more comfortable talking to Chino. And that may have been because it was in person um, rather than, than on the phone. But okay. he also is, he was just, he had a very personable, friendly tone. Not that Maynard wa was unfriendly. But it was just very much more straightforward. Very cool. Love me some Chino, man. I dig it. And I dig his other project that he does on his own um, where he DJs. I'm trying to think. They, they were here doing their gigs. Yeah. Ah, there's like, he had a few things going on. There was like Three Crosses was one. That's I think. right. Uh, yeah. Uh, palms. Some Palms. Is that right? Yeah. Palms. Yeah, man. So, so, uh, team sleep is that another one team sleep i don't uh, know i'm just I think pulling is. stuff out of the air it now <laughs> yes man because he's you know he's been grinding doing this thing since since the 90s you know what i mean so uh, yeah. he's he's been involved with so many different uh, bands and and done uh added his voice to different songs with tool for instance like passenger uh mm -hmm. or the other way around it was maynard coming in on the deftones track passenger and uh Great guys, man. That's really cool. There's a couple of my favorite uh, vocalists right there for you to be able to talk to Maynard right there. And I can imagine he's a little uh, somewhat, maybe you could say eccentric, but hey, it's cool. I'll take it. Yeah, I like Maynard. Yeah, we, yeah, we need those kind of people, man. Yeah, man, it's, a, it's a method to the madness to get it all done. It's all right. That's right. Well, how about these two big hitters right here? What do you think? Are you more of a Metallica or Megadeth fan? Metallica. Hey, field, yes. yeah. Papa Head, the boys. You I know, think, uh, it, I, you know, we haven't had Metallica here in Corpus in ages. I would love for them to give us some love and play the American Bank Center and sell that sucker out for like a whole weekend. Yeah. They could do it. Now, I, I did take my, uh, so uh, real quick, um, back to the Deftones. My my sons have hamsters and uh, <laughs> my, my drummer son, Audie, he named his uh, his hamster Chino, um, <laughs> but I took yeah. uh, <laughs> I took my kids to that uh, Megadeth Lamb of God show at the American Bank Center, and uh, my guitar playing son Xander is now a very big uh, Megadeth fan. Uh, they they both like uh, Lamb of God, but he he got really into Megadeth uh, after yeah. that show and. He's like, Dad, I really want to see him again now because I didn't really, I didn't know a lot of their music and I didn't, you know, I didn't get it as much. I didn't get into it as much. He's like, now that I, 
now that I know the songs and I know how to play some of them a little bit, um, but he, he's really into Marty Friedman um, and his okay. guitar playing. Wow. Uh, so he's trying to do that stuff, you know? Yes, I can see where his passion comes from because Megadeth has always been known for the players, you know, the, the guitar players that, that Dave Mustaine has always surrounded himself with, as well as the drummers, are the best in the business. And yeah. as, as becoming guitar players, seeing those guys shred like that, it's like, whoa, man, definitely. And, and Megadeth's got that, you know, they've got so many radio hits and, you know, they've got a great heavy sound, but just so uh well done that it's just a you know it's 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 a pop it's it's part of american pop culture um oh yeah they've done or you know they've been a part of the bay area music scene just like metallica has sure they may not have that same kind of uh uh cloud as metallica has done but in a in a, my eyes megadeth does because you know dave mustaine has, has has done anything and everything he's always had to do for the band to keep it grinding and uh got a lot of love for dave Got a lot of love for him. Man. Yeah, but yeah, Metallica, definitely, man. I, I, but Metallica, yeah. you know, they got yes. some hits. <laughs> yes, I love it, man. I, I love it. You know, I'm I'm thinking about doing a, a little extra content episode uh, called "What If in Metal," and one of my one of my content questions is going to be, "What if a different member of Metallica passed away instead of Cliff? What if Lars passed? Oh, wow. You know, who would be the drummer yeah. that would fill that time for?" For Lars Ulrich and Metallica, and, and what would the sound be like if Cliff kept writing like he was already? And, wow, that's wild. Yeah, you know what I mean. So there's some cool questions I'm going to come up with. So, you know, I'm looking forward to doing that. But let's if go Cliff to the were next. Still one. with the band, uh, I, I would say yeah, if Cliff were still with the band, um, and Justice for All would have had a whole lot more bass on it. <laughs> Ooh, you better believe it. Right off the bat, you know it. Uh, poor Jason, man, and his recording on that. But I, I got so much love for Jason, and you know, seeing the different Metallica movies, and and it, it, I just got so much respect for him that that he had such a thick skin to put up with all the the hazing and, and bullshit that that the yeah. Metallica did at the very beginning, as him being the new guy for 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 Metallica, and you know, it it just kind of sucks, you know, in some kind of monster when you know he ends up leaving the band and you know left Metallica, kind of second guessing. You know, what are we doing here? You know, why is this guy leaving the band? You know, we've got Metallica. Who would want to leave Metallica? But, you know, anyway, good movie. If you haven't seen it, my listeners, please check that Metallica movie out. Let's hit two new big bad. Well, two. My next question is going to be two old school greats. Who do you prefer out of Ozzy Osbourne and Ronnie James Dio? Man, uh... I would I would go with with Ozzy. I would tend to probably l listen to more Ozzy as far as his solo stuff and his work with Black Sabbath. I mean, Black Sabbath, dude, when they yeah. came out, nobody was doing what they were doing. They, I mean, right. you you War Pigs. You listen to that these days, and it's still a good solid jam. I can't imagine listening to that in the frame of what. 1969 or i'm not sure what year that song specifically came out but when black sabbath came out it was 1969. you think about yes. all the other music surrounding that year and you hear what they're doing yeah they, people must have been freaking out like what the hell is this it doesn't sound like <laughs> anything anywhere um so just yeah. you know him being part of that groundbreaking uh, sound, you know, you got to honor that. Um, Ronnie James Dio, I think, better vocalist, better singer, better voice. Um, as far as you know, technically speaking, for sure. But sure. Um, there's yeah. been more songs with Ozzy's voice on them for me that I would like than Ronnie James Dio. I did. Um, not that one of them, you know, like. Nothing, nothing wrong with Dio. Yes, I know, man. Oh, uh, you know, I, I think of Dio and I think of Tenacious D and him coming out of that movie and how, you know, I love that the pick of destiny. You know, Jack yeah. Black and and, and uh, um, is it? Give me the uh, other guy's glass. name. Ron, 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 what's glass? Something glass. I forget. Crystal Glass. Oh man, 
amazing guys. I love that movie. I love how, you know, Dave Grohl came in there and played the devil. Oh, man, just super stuff, super movie, uh, super movie. So let's go to the next one. And it's comparison of the last two singers. Both of them were in these two bands. Which bands do you prefer, Black Sabbath or Deep Purple? I go with Black Sabbath. Hey, all right. Hey, yeah. you know, I'm more. I'm I'm with you on that. 100 10 percent. I love Dio and I love his voice. And, and yeah, I think he's a better vocalist as far as Ozzy. But man, I love Ozzy solo stuff, and I love everything he's done with Black Sabbath. And that's what I kind of got into first. So I'm glad that I don't have to make this choice. But Black Sabbath, it is for you. All right. Um, Last question I got for you, Monty. Two guitar legends, two greats. Who do you pick out of Randy Rhodes versus Dimebag Darrell? Oh, boy. Uh, so I'm not... Um, I, I don't know how to play guitar. Um, when I listen to it, I don't listen to it technically it's funny i mentioned uh our mutual friend carlos um yeah and he plays guitar and and when he listens to uh, a band you know he listens to it a little bit differently than i do you know he might appreciate okay. something yeah. uh like like the black keys you know like yeah that, that's cool but it's it's a simpler type of guitar playing than some of the uh you know the technical the more technical stuff like the you know, your your Judas Priest or Iron Maiden or or Mega Death or you know they they they're a little more technical. Um, yeah, I don't I don't listen for the, the technical stuff. Um, um, so I don't know. I know the reputations of of the guitarists, but I would have to say that the Dimebag is more the kind of guitar playing that that uh, that connects with me. Okay, all right. I know they're definitely different approaches. Um, yeah. Randy Rhodes is a legend, but uh, well, both of them are. Uh, but uh, I like I like Dimebag, the, the heavy stuff that uh, Pantera yeah. did. The heavy the stuff. Hey, you know, um, with them doing the, uh, the the new Pantera reunion shows and them having Zach Wild on guitar uh, for Dime and having Charlie Benante on drums, um any chance of you maybe taking the boys to go see pantera in austin when they're getting ready to play here and i think in august man you know they would <laughs> they would be up for it they would definitely be up for it um yeah don't have any plans to to go out of town at the moment but um okay they did say that if uh if corn ever uh -huh. comes nearby they definitely want to see corn and yes. and Metallica for sure, and um, and and Megadeth. So awesome. those three, they've said, you know, if they come, Dad, you gotta take us to see them. And uh, anything else that I might take them to is 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 you know just like a little extra. That's so, right. That's a possibility. Are they you gonna go to that one? Yes, yeah, very cool. Very. Are, cool. are you gonna go to that show? A matter of fact, I bought a pair a, a pair of tickets to go check it out on the lawn because, uh, man, tickets are freaking expensive. Jeez, and uh, I know I know uh, the, I'm gonna stay overnight and all that good stuff. And so I, I try to keep my finances to a minimum because I want to buy some some concert souvenirs while I'm there too and have some drinks. Yeah. So uh, yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna be there. I wanted to go see him with Metallica on Friday night in Arlington. But tickets for that and the nosebleed section at the top of the AT&T Center were starting at 250 when I was able to get them at pre-sale. And by the time they went to sale on the public, they were hitting like 400 for the same seat, you know, because wow. they'd already been bought and, and been reselled by, you know, by other sellers now. And so it, it was just out of my price range, man. And as much as I wanted to see Metallica on this new tour and I never get tired of seeing them, I just uh, I can't afford it this time around. So... Luckily, he's doing a show in Austin on the two dates right after the Metallica show. So, hey, I bought tickets for that one. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, you know, that's where these uh, these tribute shows kind of come in, you know, because it it 
helps you to satisfy that desire to hear the band, but right. um, it's more realistic for your work life schedule and it's better for your uh, budget as well. And so like, you know, your, your stuff with uh, fistful of metal and, and um, although that's, those are originals uh, uh, mostly, right? You do mostly originals and yeah. full of metal. Those are all covers, but, but I also do that vocal display of power where we do a Pantera tribute as well. Okay, and, um, we you helped us actually get on to uh, one of those Turkey bowls that when you were working over at C101. Yeah, and, uh, I remember that. that yeah. First time we got to play Brewster. So it was a, that, that got us in the door. And, and since then, Hell, we've been we've been there about half a dozen times. So, and thanks and a lot for making. Fun. Of course, that was fun. Yeah, oh, I had heard great things about you guys. I had seen you once myself, and I was just like, man, it's uh it's the right music for uh, for this event and this crowd. You cool. you had a band called uh, Rockin Rockenstein, right? Yeah, I sure did. Um, yeah. Probably for about six seven years, and I think it's only been a couple of years that it's been down. And uh, it's because my guitar player, he, he uh, moved on to other things. But, uh, yeah, I love Rockenstein because yeah. we did the 90s stuff. Tool, Deftone, Soundgarden, Nirvana, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. That was yeah. fun. So, so those kinds of things, like, I'll take my boys to, uh, to see tribute bands at Brewster Street or, or House of Rock um, ah. and things like that. And, and they love it, you know. They have a great time. They, they rock out and, you know, it's, it's doable. Um, yes. Yeah. But the bigger shows, you know, you still want to check out the real thing where and when you can. But it's just uh, with the way things are these days. And, you know, there was a time that Concrete Street, when I was at C101, we were promoting probably 25 rock shows a year. Yeah. And it would be kind of hard to differentiate who's coming or not differentiate, but just like keep it separate because you'd have a show on a, on a Monday and a Thursday. So you're yeah. hitting these concerts hard on the air and you're starting to not even really be able to keep track of who's coming and when. Um, and so kind of back then we would say, slow, maybe slow down a little bit and kind of space it out a little bit. Um, let the, let the promotion breathe, let the concert breathe, let, People have money, you know, um, for the shows and yeah. um, almost like from one year to the next, we went from promoting about 25 a year to promoting 12 a year. Yeah. And yeah. then then we were like, well, we didn't mean, you know, that slow. Don't slow down that much, you know. Yeah. So um, and um, now it's down to like, I don't know, man, uh, you don't let, not a lot let, of rock shows coming. I know, I know. It's 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 a shame. Even like at the House of Rock, you know, we're not getting too many to choose from over there too. Um, but you know, it's 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 so kind of surprising because after COVID, it was like, man, every, all, everybody's band was going to hit the road and filling up all these venues, and and it was going to be like nonstop, you know, shows. It seemed like, and then here we are, not too much to choose from, and you know, there should be. Yeah, I know we got like Giovanni and 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 uh, and I think that his his band coming in, in a couple of weeks and. And, you know, El Nino's coming in May, but we should have two or three, at least two or three good national bands rolling through the House of Rock or Brewster Street or the Pavilion easily. You know, San Antonio's got them. Austin's got them. Yeah. I guess uh, maybe we're just in a smaller market where they just, uh, you know, it's uh, it's more beneficial for them to uh, not come so far south and, and maybe just go as far south as San Antonio, Austin, Houston, right. and then keep doing yeah, the, the, and the states we're not really on the way to anywhere right. too. You know, that's where I would, I would get mad. You'd hear, uh, I mean, El Paso is <laughs> a big city, but it's like, that's way out there, almost in the middle of nowhere, you know? And like, you're going to, you're going to play in El Paso and you won't play here, but El Paso is on the way yes. to somewhere else. Whereas we're kind of the end of the road, you know, like you got to turn around yeah. and go back once, you, once you played Corpus. Yes. Yeah, no kind of how, how that goes. Hey, it's all good. Hey, we're going to stay optimistic and just keep our fingers crossed that, that more music keeps yeah. coming here. Keep rocking the American Bank Center and Concrete Street and House of Rock. And, you know, um, I'm going to wrap things up right there, Monty. That was the last question I had for you and draw the line. And, you know, it's been a great time talking with you this afternoon, man. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And, and I, I 
listeners who had a great time listening today. And uh, how can our listeners keep up with you? Definitely on the radio station Monday through Friday, right? And yeah, maybe Monday through Friday, 3 to 7. Um, the website for the station is uh, 1045theeagle.com. Um, you can listen. I don't, there was an app, but I mean, I got so many apps on my phone. I don't even really want another app. So if you want to listen, the website 1045theeagle.com, just click on listen live. Anything that has the internet uh, and a speaker, then you, you're you listening right there. Um, I have social yeah. media, Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. And um, the you can look for Monty Montana or the username is uh, Soy El Monte. So either one of those will take you to my stuff. And I try to post things that might be uh, humorous, entertaining, educational, inspirational, you know, some kind of value um, yeah. is is the thought behind the post, at least. I don't know if it always hits that way, but I'm trying, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, Monty, on behalf of everybody here in Corpus, all my rocker friends and, and metal headbangers, it's been great always hearing you on the air and you being a great ambassador for our community on the air, on for the rock community especially. And thanks so much for your time this afternoon, man. Uh, best of wishes to you and your career. And man, um, if there's anything, I, I hope to be able to talk to you again and have you back on the show after a little while and kind of see how things have been going for you. And from me, from all of us, we love you, man. Keep it rocking out there on the airwaves. We're going to keep listening to you on 104.5 and keep following your career. And thanks, everybody out there on listening to the Tony Gomez Show. I appreciate you checking us out on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, Monty, why don't you say bye to everybody? Dude, um, thank you so much uh, for your kind words. This is this has been great, man. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's fantastic what you're doing and uh, to, to see you getting enjoyment out of it and um just uh, just keeping it going, man. That's 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 good stuff right there. So um, look forward to checking you out on stage sometime. So um, uh, just yeah, thanks a lot, man. I'd love to talk to you again, and I hope we can stay in touch. Awesome, man. We will stay in touch definitely. Well, Monty, uh, best of wishes to you. Have a great weekend. I will keep in touch, and to all my listeners out there, thanks a lot. Keep grinding every day, and I'll see you at the next show.